So let's go take a look at page fault handler in Windows. And specifically what we want to see is, you know, what does the stack look like at the time that the page fault occurred? What does the CR2 look like at the time the page fault occurred? And I'm going to step back to have this here so that we can, you know, interpret what the stack looks like. So we're going to break into the debugger. We're going to do bang IDT 14, bang IDT 0 and 14 for decimal 14, because we want to see what the page fault handler is. So that's the name of the page fault handler, NTKI page fault. And so we're going to set a hardware breakpoint on this in order to stop, break on access, execute, size of 1, and that particular address. So we want to basically see once someone hits the page fault handler, what does the stack look at that exact instant? So let's just go ahead and hit go. And then at some point, someone somewhere on the system is going to page fault. And so here we are now, a page fault has occurred. So let's go ahead and look at RSP. Okay, here's RSP. I'm gonna try to adjust this to make it show up as a single column. All right, that's RSP. Let's scroll down to CRCR2, to CRCR2. All right, CR2, that is the particular linear address which was trying to be accessed at the time that this occurred. Let's go ahead and do PTE on CR2 and see what it thinks about that particular address. Okay, well, it seems to have a valid translation. So how do we interpret this particular page fault? The first entry is the error code. So we would interpret that like this. It is three. So it is one for the read write. So it was an attempt to write and one for it was caused by a page level violation. Usually when I was doing this before, I would tend to see zero here, which would be, you know, kind of non-intuitive. You would be confused of like, you know, oh, is that actually, you know, the, the error code? It just seems to be zero. But that was because the uh, we just, you know, got lucky or unlucky, depending on your take, about, you know, what kind of page fault just occurred. So this is a fault caused by page protection, and it was a fault caused by a write. Then we would expect to see RIP, CS, R flags, RSP, and SS on the stack. So this would be the RIP. That would be the thing that actually caused the page fault. Let's see, you know, in which process context we are in right now. Give us a sense. So tiworker.exe. If we look at this particular thing, I don't know that I will have symbols for that, but you know, hey, let's try it. Okay, don't know what that is. Don't have the symbols for it. But that is the you know assem This is the uh, this is the assembly instruction that caused the actual fault. So remember that fault Hitler's fault. RIP points at the assembly instruction that actually caused the fault when it's a fault as opposed to a trap. So this saved RIP means that this particular address must have been the thing that actually caused the fault. So R14, we could go back and check that. We would expect that you know R14 plus 8 is probably going to calculate out to this address. So let's take a look. You know, the bottom is 8, so we would expect FE20949 blah 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 3C000. So let's go look at R14. All right, R14 indeed, blah 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 C. 3C00, and the plus 8 means that this is actually the address that was calculated through this particular memory access, and that's when a page fault occurred because some sort of attempt to access memory that it shouldn't have, attempt to write to memory that it shouldn't have. So let's go ahead and go back and look at that PTE entry again. Oops, PTE for that particular address. And we can see that actually this address, the, the last page table, indicates that the particular page is readable only. It is non-writable. So this process, whatever it was doing, it tried to write to some page, and that page is read only, and so that caused a page fault. So RIP of the faulting instruction, CS of the faulting instruction, R flags of the faulting instruction, RSP of the faulting instruction, SS of the faulting instruction. So that was a conveniently more useful than normal uh, particular page fault that I just got lucky. You should do this yourself, and you should, again, go look at the error codes, 
look at the values put onto the stack and see whether it makes sense given what we've just said about CR2, stack entries, and error codes according to this.